A warm welcome to VTU e Shikshana program e-learning center. In the past video, we have come across about module number 5 of artificial neural network. So, we are going to continue the same module number 5 in this video. In the previous video, we have come across about an hierarchy of maps. So, the hierarchy of maps has been shown over there, which is going to be mapped with the primary to secondary, secondary to territory. So, in other, in other words, we can say that there is an ample neighbor neurobiological evidence for the formation of a hierarchy of visual. So, some kind of maps in the human brains which is going to map from primary map to secondary map and secondary to territory maps. So, through a sequence of temporal processing that retains fine grains topological orders as present in the original sens sensory signals. So, the main points in that in the pattern recognition and information processing, a main step is the identification of extraction of a set of features which may be called as invariance, which concentrates the essential information of the input pattern set. So, this leads to economy of representation which results in significant savings in the storage and transmission bandwidth requirements. So, by which of this nature, the computational maps provides a technique for efficient and dynamic processing of information. Let me continue with this topological preservations. So, to quote Cohen's statement, it will be enduring to learn that an almost optimal spatial order in relations to a signal statistics can be completely determined in a simple self organizing process under a control of received information. This is the quote given by Cohen. So, with the help of this we are going to continue with the presentation of topological maps. The self organizing feature map is a neural network which models that is based on Cohen's discovery. So, the topological information prevalent in high dimensional input data that can be transformed onto a one or two dimensional layers of neurons, which is going to be impinging upon the inputs. Topological map preserves an order or a metric defined on the impinging inputs. So, they are motivated by the fact that representation of a sensory information in the human brain based a geological or geometric order. So, which is going to be a human brain as a geometrical order. Further, a underlying belief is that the same functional principles can be responsible for diverse in the self organization. So, a diverse representation of an information possibly even hierarchic. So, it is going to be in a presence in a hierarchical way. Let me see about a one dimensional topology preserving map. So, the one dimensional topology preserving map which is to understand the concept of topological preservations considering a m neurons neutral network m neuron neural network where the ith neuron produces a response which is going to be present in the form of s k s to the power of k in response to the input pattern which is going to be an i k subset of this particular value. Assume that the input vector which can be ordered according to some distance matrix or in some topological way which can be i 1 r i 2 r i 3 r etcetera, where r is going to be having some order, the r is going to be having some order, ordering relationship. So, which is going to be present over there in the order relationship. So, then the network which can produce a one dimensional topology preserving map if for i 1 is going to be greater than that of i 2, i 2 is going to be greater than that of 
I 3. So, we are going to get the particular value as S signal S I 1 to the power of 1 is going to be max of this function and S 2 and S 3 so on it goes on. So, we will see the actual self organization feature map. The Cohen self organizing feature map shortly we can call it as S O F M which represents an approach by means of which important topological informations can be obtained through an unsupervised learning process. So, the unsupervised learning process which is going to be obtained through the particular thing. So, the self organizing future map algorithm is going to be primarily a competitive vector quantizer in which a real value patterns are going to be get presented sequentially to a linear or a planar array of neurons which may have a Mexican hat kind of interactions also. So, these interactions allows the clusters of neurons to win the competition rather than one single neuron. So, then the weight of the winning neuron are going to be adjusted to bring about a better response to the current input. So, the iterations, the iterations, the iterative applications of this competitive adoption process to a sequence of input patterns eventually results in weights that specify the cluster of network nodes that are topologically close. Being sensitive to the clusters of inputs that are physically close in the input space. So, in other words we can say that there is a correspondence between a signal feature and the response location on this particular map. So, the spatial locations of this neurons in an array corresponding to a specific domain of inputs. Uh, we may say that the, uh, which maps the preserve the topology of the particular input. So, in other words we can say that which map preserves the topology of the input. So, in addition to a genetical wired visual context there has to be some scope for self organization of synapse of domain sensitive neurons which is to allow a local topological ordering to develop. So, as I said that the self organizing feature map probably finds its origin in the seminal work of the self organization who put forth the idea that in addition to a genetical wired visual context there has to be some scope for self organization of the synapse of a domain sensitive neurons to allow a local topological ordering to develop. Such a way some ideas are going to be underlying this. Let me discuss about the underlying ideas of self organizing feature maps which is going to be an unsupervised learning process and is a competitive vector quantizer too. So, a real value patterns are going to be presented sequentially to a linear or a planar array of neurons with Mexican hat interactions. So, the cluster of neurons wins the competition usually that is going to be present over there. So, the weights of the winning neurons are going to be adjusted to bring about a better response to the current input. So, that finally, the weight specifies the cluster of network nodes that are topologically close and sensitive to the clusters of input that are physically close into the input space. So, that which corresponds between the signal feature and the response location of the particular map. So, the spatial location of a neuron in the array corresponds to a specific domain of the inputs and finally, which is going to be useful to preserve the topology of the particular inputs. Let me see about the architecture of self organized future map network architecture. Considering this network figure which represents a two dimensional lattice or a field of m cross m neurons. 
So, if you are going to see about it, which consisting of a Mexican hat competitive interactions are going to be get present over the I comma J. So, a Cohen network typically compromise or comprises a two dimensional planar field of neurons that have a Mexican hat interrelations, competitive interrelations to support the soft computing among the neurons. Let me see the operational details, how this is going to be get operated over here, in what way it is going to be done, its functions. For a topological preservation of this information, distance relations in the high dimensional spaces should be approximated by the network as the distance in the two dimensional neuron network. For this mapping to be get generated, we require the four steps of process. The first is nothing but input neuron should be exposed to a sufficient number of different inputs, to a sufficient number of different inputs. Next, for a given input, only the winning neuron and its neighbor adopts their connections. For a given input, only the winning neurons and its neighbors adopts their connections. And a similar weight update procedure is going to be employed on this neurons which comprise to topologically related subsets. So, the weight update procedure is going to be employed over there so that a many adjacent neurons which is going to be get comprised with this topological data are going to be get related and it is going to be related to its subsets. So, that the resulting adjustment enhances the response to the same or to a similar input that occurs subsequently. Such a way it is going to make this particular thing. So, these are the four requirements to satisfy the process of this mapping, topological mapping. Let me see about some of the notations, how it is going to be get present. In the other words, Cohen said that an intruding results from the sort of a spatial correlated learning is that the weight vector tends to attain the value that are ordered along the axis of the network. So, that each neuron is going to be identified by the double row or column index i j i comma j is equal to 1 to n. So, that the i i j neuron as an incoming weight vector. So, with the help of this expression we can come to know about that. So, we now proceed to formalize the algorithm assuming the vector input x k is equal to x 1 to the power of k comma etcetera x n to the power of k transverse is going to be subset of the relations. So, where this R n is going to be taken the pattern space which is going to be represented to an m cross m fields of neurons. So, due to the planar nature of the field each neuron will be identified by the double row column index. So, that it is going to provide a weight matrix or weight vector as w i j of k is equal to w 1 comma i j to the power of k comma w 2 i comma j to the power of 2 etcetera up to w n comma i j to the power of k which is going to be a subset of the pattern space. At the time instance k we are going to get this value. Although this notation may be seems a cumbersome, it is an appropriate since a neuron in a two dimensional array must be identified by its row and column. So, it is going to be identified by its row and column indices. So, as before while we subscripting this time index k for a vector, we use a parenthesis for the clarity but here we are going to remove the parenthesis and we are going to identify the same value like this. So, this is going to be a notations which are going to be get present in this particular topological mapping. Move on to the neighborhood computations. The first step is to find the uh, best matching weight vector which is going to be taken as w i comma j for the present input 
and to therefore identify a network or neighborhood weight as Nij around the winning neuron. So, one can find the best matching weight vector by comprising the inner products of the impinging inputs xk with each weight vectors. So, that the winning neuron is going to be the one of that as the largest inner product. So, we are going to make that as going to be a largest winning data. So, eventually with normalized weight vectors we have seen the maximum inner product criteria which may be reduced to minimum edulian distance criteria. So, that the winning neuron is going to be one of that minimizes the distance which is going to be get predominantly present over there with the Cohen suggest using this later. Since it is more general and applies to a natural sign, uh, signals in the matrix of the uh, vector spaces, we can take that the term x k is minus w i j of k is equal to minimum of i j into this term. So, that what happened the neighborhood is going to be a function of the time as it may be a training of elapse that the neighborhood is going to be get shrink. So, the continuation of this if you are going to see about that we are going to have the shapes neighborhood shapes how the neighborhood shapes are going to be get present over here. So, the self organizing feature map algorithm assumes that the planar field of the neurons as a Mexican hat interactions that allows the identification of a neuron cluster around the winning neuron. So, for the simulation purpose we define the hypothological neighborhood n i j of indices of a neuron in a region surrounded or surrounding by the winning neuron with the index of i and j. So, the shape of this neighborhood might be either a square or it may be a hexagonal as shown in this figure. And the width of the region around the winning neuron i j is going to be specified by a radius r by the radius r which is going to get measured discreetly in terms of the number of neurons. So, it shows about the square neighborhood and it is going to show the hexagonal neighborhood. So, the topological neighborhoods can be of different shapes such as square or hexagon. So, this neighborhood radius r contracts in time. So, the width of this neighborhood is going to be a function of time as we are aware about that it the neighborhood is going to be get shrinks. So, in the continuation the version of this shrinkage of neighborhood width can be implemented by gradually decreasing the positive lateral feedback and increasing the negative lateral feedback in the Mexican hat function. So, the use of the particular n i j stimulates the quick formation of an activity cluster. Once a winning cluster has been identified the weights of the neurons within the cluster are going to be get updated such a way it is going to be doing this process over here. Let me see about the adoptions in self organizing feature map. Adoption in self organizing feature maps takes a place according to the second generalized law of adoption which have been presented in the theorem 2 in the previous video. So, which is going to take about that adoption as w i or w l comma i j is equal to epsilon l x l s i j signal and which is going to be consisting of the gamma value which incorporates the leaning the learning according to this Hebbins hypothesis, but with a forgetting term scaled by the some functions which is going to be a gamma term of this neural signal. So, in the simple case we are going to consider that the gamma value is going to be considered as gamma of s i j is equal to we are going to consider this gamma value which is going to be taken into beta of signal i j. With the help of that we can yield the expression as like this the beta term is going to be inserted into the gamma value 
and in this case an adoption law is going to be get adopted adoptive law the second case adoptive law is going to be adopted in this. So, that already we have studied about that in detail. So, choosing the value of epsilon is equal to beta without any loss of general uh, generality further which can be get simplified with the help of this above equation into this term. So, which is going to be consisting of x l minus w l of i j. So, which is a familiar form of gated learning that commonly categorized competitive learning. This is the standard competitive learning as we have been come across with the ATR model. Let me discuss about an self organized future maps adoption. One can choose the signal function to be binary in nature. In accordance with this neuron within this particular fire, this is simply stated as follows as s i j is equal to 1 or 0 if the condition is going to be satisfies or if the condition is not going to be get satisfies. With this single behavior the above equation can be get simplified to this particular term w l comma i j is going to be epsilon or 0 when it satisfies the condition or it is going to be not satisfying the condition. So, to observe about this adoptions we are going to have two time constraints one is going to be a continuous time and one more is going to be discrete time. During the continuous time in the vector notation the self organized future map adoption law can be rewritten as like this when the condition is going to be satisfies if it is going to be not satisfied it will become 0. So, here the weight vector of the winning cluster update themselves to resemble the input vector x to a greater extent. So, in general the learning rate and the neighborhood or both functions are going to be a time each having a concentrating nature for this continuous time. When compared with this discrete the discrete time the discrete time this equation may be rewritten this continuous equation may be rewritten or recast as shown over here where we explicitly denote the neighborhood of this winning neuron i and j at the iteration of k at the iteration of k as n i j to the power of k we are going to identify that and we are going to denote it over there. So, with the help of that we are going to see about the operational summary of this self organizing feature map algorithm. So, this table shows about the operational summary of this algorithm as we are going to take the given data a stream of training vectors are going to be drawn uniformly from a possible unknown probability distributions and we need to initialize the weights to some small random numbers and we have to take the value of the neighborhoods as well we have to mention or initialize the learning rate we have to initialize the learning rate then it is going to start about the iteration. So, during the iteration it is going to select it is going to pick a sample x k it is going to take a sample over there. Similarly, it has to match the to find the winning neurons. So, similarity matchings has to be get studied over there and to find the winning neuron with the help of this expression it is going to do that one and later it has to adapt. So, and it has to update the synaptic vectors of only the winning clusters it should not update all the clusters only the winning clusters has to be get updated. So, once it is going to be get updated it has to go for the iterations until there is no observable change is going to be get mapped in that one it has to complete this iteration such a way it is going to do its operation for this algorithm. 
I want to make you people to observe some of the observations. So, two phases we have to observe over there, one is going to be called as ordering phase, one more is going to be called as convergence phase. The following observations are going to be in order, so that the learning rate in the beginning should be close to unity during the initial period of adoption, which is going to be called as ordering phase. So, the learning rate should be always close to unity that is going to be called as ordering phase, the initial period of adoption. During this space, a general topological ordering of weight vectors takes places for the first 2000 epcops or so. So, the learning rate should be decreased linearly and exponentially or inversely with iteration index k with the iteration index k is equal to 0 0.1. So, this is going to be considered as 0 0.1. Okay. Sometimes it may be a small value also. And coming to the next one convergence phase. During the convergence phase which occurs after this period, the learning rate should be maintained at a small value say around 0 0.01, it may be around 0 0.01 for a large number of epcos which may typically run into many ten thousands of or tens of thousands values. Apart from a careful adjustment of this learning rate, the width of this neighborhood and its range of contractions have to be given due considerations in order for the network to coverage. So, that what happened apart from a careful adjustment, the learning rate, the width of the neighborhood and rate of constant co contractions which has to be given to a due considerations in order to form the network to be get converge. So, that during the ordering phase n i j k shrinks linearly with k to finally include only a few neurons. So, that during the convergence phase what happened it may compromise comprise only one or no neighbors. So, as we are going to see about the shapes of neighborhood code as previously we have seen about the shapes of the neighborhoods. The shapes of the neighborhood could be either a square or a hexagonal. At the start of this algorithm runs usually includes all the neurons in the network and gradually shrinks with iteration index. So, that what happens during the ordering phase it shrinks linearly with k to finally include only a few neurons and during the convergence phase it may comprise only one or no neighbors. Let me see about the simulation MATLAB simulation example and code description. We may conclude this presentation discussions with a simple computer experiment that provides insights to the behavior of Cohen's algorithm. So, in this experiment we assume a 8 cross 8 planar array of neurons and want the network to derive a topological map that corresponds to a uniform distribution of 500 points into two dimensional bipolar square as minus 1 comma 1 into minus 1 comma 1. So, this data points are plotted in this figure. The process of adoption starts out by assuming the initial weight vectors to be random points which have been distributed in the input pattern space. In the present experiments, we can see that the weight vector were initialized to random points in minus 1 to 1 and minus 1 to 1. 
So, this data employed in this experiment comprised 500 points distributed uniformly over the bipolar square as minus 1 to 1 and 1 minus 1 to 1. This point describes a geometrical square topology. So, with this the learning rate was initialized to 0.9, it is going to be initialized to 0.9 and was assumed to be decrease linearly from the first triple line in accordance with the function. So, that we are going to take the learning rate is equal to 0 0.9 into 1 minus epic by 1000. So, the first triple line epoch comprises the ordering phase at the end of this particular triple line epoch. The learning rate was minimized at 0 0.0.05, 0 0.05 through the convergence phase. So, that the epoch compromise comprises a single signal complete presentation of the pattern in the pattern set. Hence, the k is an iterative index and the learning rate changes only when an epic elapses. So, that the initial value of the neighborhood radius was r is equal to 6, this means that the neighborhood is going to be initially a square of width 12 centered around the winning neuron i and j. So, the neighborhood width contracts by 1 every 200 epics. So, after 1000 epics marking the end of the ordering phase, the neighborhood radius was maintained at 1. This means that the winning neurons and its 4 adjacent neurons were designed to uh, update their weights on all subsequent iterations. So, one can also let this value to go to 0 which means that eventually during the learning phase only the winning neurons are going to be get updated its weights. Let me see about the simulation results. So, the simulation results are going to be very interesting to see about this. So, here the Cohen maps at different epochs of the training process have been constructed. So, these maps are drawn in the following fashions. So, there is a point on the plane that represents the vector a weight vector of each of 64 neurons in the network. So, weight vector points corresponds to the physically an adjacent neuron in the two dimensional networks which are jointly by lines up on the map. In other words, we can say that the interior neurons connects to four neighbors. So, that gradually during the ordering phase the particular four neurons, peripheral neurons connects to three or two neighbors. It may be for the corner neurons. So, notice how the map initially represents a completely randomized topology of the input space. So, which is going to be gradually during the ordering phase, the map unfolds the approximate the shape of a square. It is very important that the neuron weight be correctly ordered during this phase or else the correct topology picture cannot be get emerge. So, that what happens? The convergence phase refines the topological features of the map at a very slow rate. So, that the successful simulations, the successful simulations of this Cohen network depends entirely on a careful choice of parameter. So, is there any incorrectly chosen if map converges to topology that are very difficult from that of this input space. So, reconstructs the Cohen maps at different epochs. The simulation represents the weight vector of each of the 64 neurons and it is going to represent the two dimensional networks are going to be joined by lines on the map with the interior neurons connects to four neighborhoods and to ordering phase the map unfolds and the convergence phase which refines the topology features of the particular 
map. Let me see about the MATLAB code to simulate the self organizing feature map algorithm. So, it clearly mentions that initially we are going to clear the data and we are going to make the paths and we are going to take the data which is going to get specified over there and we need a figure. So, need to flop plot over there. So, we have to ask that data to system to draw and we have to take a maximum number of neurons on this particular axis. We are going to take the axis and we need to initialize the weights. So, it is going to be get initialized over there and we have to define the maximum node points neighborhoods and size has to be get mentioned and we need to define the contractions. The contraction rate has to be get defined over there and we need to select for the count, count of contract of every 200 epochs and we need the same figure with a different axis as minus 1 to 1 and minus 1 to 1 in x axis minus 1 to 1 and in y axis minus 1 to 1. So, we need to present that axis over there and we need to take the epochs and count has to be get start it has to be count and it has to be take the data learning rate after this learning rate it is going to check for that one and it is going to update the data. Once it is going to be taking this values in rows and columns and it is going to take the index value and which is going to be get formulating the data in this particular sequence. Later, it is going to take for the maximum neuron and it needs to plot the graph over there. For i is equal to 1 and for j is equal to 1, the maximum neurons are going to be get taken into consideration and which is going to be get the neighborhoods. After that, it is going to check for the neighborhoods whether it is going to be get joint and finally, it is going to take into the consideration to draw the particular picture. And once it is going to be count is going to be reached 200 and it is going to check for the neighborhood contracts and finally, it is going to be makes the count is equal to 0 and the process is going to be get simulated output is going to be get exist. So, this is a lengthy MATLAB code which have been specified to check for the simulation of this particular algorithm. So, let me see the simulated results. If you are going to see about this picture which have been generated using a MATLAB code, let me take a quick look at this particular code. So, it is a initialized randomized state which have been mentioned like this, the iteration rate is going to be 300 and it is going to take the iteration rate for 600, the picture is going to be defer, the iteration rate is going to be 800, then it is going to be it changes its position and when it is going to be reaching its iteration of 1000 or 10,000 its shapes are going to be looking like this. It is a snapshot of the simulation of this Cohen network using the parameters described in this particular form. So, which is going to be get shown as like this. So, the simulation let me see about some of the important notes of the simulation. The number of patents generated is going to be numpads and the data scatter is going to be stored in the matrix data. So, this matrix in store and x in star x and in star y stores the weights of each neuron in the grid corresponding to x and y coordinates respectively. So, as we said that we are going to check this r value is equal to 6. So, an 8 cross 8 grid of the neuron is going to be assumed and the initial neighborhood size is going to be taken as 6. So, the neighborhood will contrast by contracts neighborhood is equal to 1 for every 200 epochs. So, the variable count keeps a track of the epochs to construct to contract this neighborhoods. So, that we can present the pattern with num patterns into maximum neuron epochs. So, which is going to be taken into the consideration 
So, after 1000 epochs neuro uh, neighborhood radius maintains at 1, which means the winning neuron and its 4 adjacent neurons are going to be designated to update their weights on all the subsequent iterations. Understand? So, that it can also let this value go to 0, which means that the eventually during the learning phase only the winning neuron updates weights. Note that the learning rate decreases steadily for the first triple line apex after which it is going to be held constant at 0 0.005. During each apex the each pattern is going to be presented and the winning neuron is going to be found. So, the matrix distance stores distance from the input pattern to either each instar following which the con uh, coordinates of this winning neurons are going to be get calculated. That is done by taking a column wise minimizes into a value and keeping track of the rows and then taking the minimum of values into a value 2 keeping track on the columns. Then comes the training for all the neurons within the neighborhood a square 1 assumed here actually I am going to assume the square 1 over here. So, the weight in star x comma in star y are updated in accordance with Cohen's learning. Finally, to plot the map for each neuron it is 4 possible neighborhoods are going to be get located and the points on the map corresponding to this instars is connected by a straight line to the 4 instar corresponding to each of the 4 neighborhoods. Let me continue with the applications of the self organizing map. The application of this self organizing map originally developed up for the purpose of signal analysis. The vector Star quantization techniques have found a primary and widespread application in the image compressions, data clustering and pattern classifications. So, those three are going to be considered and artificially the self organizing map have also found application in variety of phenomena, different phenomena among us a host of other applications. I am going to give a few glimpse of that. The classical neuron uh, photonic typewriter which is going to be called as a neural photonic typewriter, vector quantization, control of robot arm using a vector quantization, radar based classifications, brain modeling, future mapping of language data by clustering the synaptic categories. So, most recently the self organizing map has been used for the organization of a massive document collections for investigating the influence of synaptic scale metrological on air quality and also a nuclear magnetic resonance metabolism profiling also going to be done over there. Let me discuss about the pattern classifications. The pattern classification is an another way to visualize a future map which is going to be labeling and each of the neurons with the test pattern that has maximally excited. The neuron is going to be a question over there. In other words, we can say the pattern in the question becomes the best stimulus of the neuron. So, this proge procedure closely resembles the way sites in the brain which is going to be get labeled by stimulus feature that maximally excite neuron at that site. Such a labeling procedure will eventually produce a well ordered partition of the map such that groups or clusters of neurons will respond maximally to the same classes of pattern. Such a topological map creates similarity relationships and can be used for the pattern classification. So, we will continue this in the next video. Thank you.